Hey guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch and today I'm going to talk to you about squash. Not only is squash one of my favorite vegetables to grow, it is also one of my favorite vegetables to eat. Did you grab me one? Thank you. And I am frying onions behind us here and my eyes are starting to burn. So if I look like I'm starting to cry, it's because of the onions, not because I'm sad. <laughs> uh, on my last video, my pantry tour video, I did receive some questions about how to store squash. Um, this is a beautiful buttercup squash, isn't it gorgeous? So because of the climate we live in, living in the north, we don't have the luxury of vine ripening our squash. And what that basically means is that the squash will grow to size and then it will ripen, change the color it's supposed to, and the stem will shrivel up like this on the vine and you cut it off and it's cured and ready for storage. We don't have that luxury here, so what I do is I cut my squash off the vine and I'll actually link a video up here for you um, where we did our big squash harvest. Um, and then I bring them inside and I put them in front of a sunny window for about two weeks Usually that's how long it seems to take and I wait until you can see this the stem is shriveled and dry like this and That the rind is nice and solid and doesn't dent easily And then I put it into my storage and that is the extent of the preparation that I give my squash for storage I have read and a couple of people mentioned this is that you can wipe the outside of your squash with some bleach just to kill off any bacteria that might be residing on the rind or you can also wipe it down with oil like olive oil or something like that and that's supposed to help seal it in a little bit. I don't do either of those things and I have had pretty good luck with being able to store squash for very extended periods of time, sometimes even up to a year, in my cold room. So I'm going to share with you one of my very favorite squash recipes and that is a squash soup. It has a lot of different adaptations you can do with the soup, so I'm just gonna make it, show you what I do, and then I'll put the basic recipe down in the description box below, <clears throat> and then you can make whatever changes or adaptations you wanna make to that recipe based on your own flavor preferences. So I've already done a little bit of the prep work before I got this video started. This recipe calls for onions. Because I'm making a really large batch, I'm quadrupling the recipe. I won't get into the amount that I'm personally using. I'll just tell you what the ingredients, basic ingredients are. And I'll give a recipe based on um, serving four people in the description box below. And then you can double it or triple it or quadruple it based on your own needs. So I've done a little bit of prep work um, prior to starting to film this video. So I'll just run you through what I've done so far. I have onions, which I chopped a little bit earlier, frying in the big pot that you can see back there. And they're frying in coconut oil. I prefer to use coconut oil rather than other kinds of oil because it has a very high smoke point. Unlike uh, say olive oil, for instance, it doesn't take a lot of heat to cause it to smoke and um, you can actually heat up coconut oil to a fairly high temperature before it's gonna start smoking on you. So I have those frying and you just wanna fry those until they're translucent, which just means that you can kinda see through them. You don't want them to brown up too much. So one of the other things that I did in preparation for this is I've roasted my squash. This is a super easy process. One of the things that you'll hear when you're researching or you'll read about when you're researching how to cook squash is a lot of recipes will tell you to peel and cube your squash and I personally find that too much work. So all I do is poke a few holes in my squash and put them right into the oven, roast them whole for about an hour, and then I cut them in half and I just use an oven mitt and then scoop out the seeds and then the flesh is ready to go and I can add it into whatever recipe I'm wanting to add it into. This is another really easy way and delicious way to make squash is um, pick a squash that is a dense fleshed Hi. squash um, the brighter orange on the inside, the better. I personally think that buttercup or butternut squashes are the best squash for roasted squash. I cut them in half, scoop out the seeds, fill it with butter, brown sugar, or maple syrup, and cinnamon, sometimes allspice, sometimes some ginger, whatever seasonings that you like. And then I roast it in the oven like that till it gets all caramelized on top. And it's so yummy. And then you can just actually cut it into slices and serve it like that. And it's absolutely delicious. So that's another really easy way to roast squash. But right now I'm roasting my squash whole. I picked a sugar pumpkin for this soup, um, a butternut squash, a acorn squash, and a buttercup squash. So now all you need to do is once you have your onions um, cooked and they're translucent, is to add in your soup stock. And you can use whatever kind of soup stock you have on hand. In my case, what I tend to do is I make soups like this the day after I've roasted a chicken. And then when I'm done eating the chicken the day before, 
I take off all the meat off the bones, stick the bones in the slow cooker overnight, and I use that to make my soup with the following day. You can also use just bouillon cubes if that's what you have, canned soup stock if that's what you have, and this recipe is best with either vegetable or chicken soup stock. So I'm just gonna add my soup stock now, and I'll come back and talk about the next few ingredients that we need. Okay, so I have my soup stock added, and now I'll run you through the different ingredients that I personally use to flavor this soup. The recipe that I'm gonna link down below is sort of a basic recipe, and I've um, adjusted it based on my personal preferences, and you can do the same. A couple of the flavors that I love with curry, did I mention that this is a curry soup? I don't think I did. This is a curry squash soup. <laughs> uh, I probably should have started with that. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna add is curry powder. These containers, I purchased these years ago and I just reuse these containers with bulk um, herbs and spices in them and they work really, really well. And then I just relabel them based on what I'm putting in them. So this is just a basic curry powder. And you just wanna add enough curry so that it has a little bit of a kick, but depending on um, your family's preferences, just kind of play around with it because it can get a little bit spicy. My kids don't love a ton of spice, so on a pot that's this size, and I probably have, I don't know, about five or six liters of water in there, um, I'm going to add four tablespoons of curry powder. So some of the other um, spices that I personally like to add to this soup is a little bit of turmeric. I don't use a ton, but it really creates a lovely orange color that I just find beautiful, so I add that. Uh, cumin, go light on the cumin. I just think this adds a nice kind of richness to the soup, but if you put too much, then it's gonna taste kind of chili-ish. And what else do I have here? And garlic. So. I'm using garlic powder, which is just about criminal in this soup because it is so much better with fresh garlic. And even if you can roast the garlic and then add the garlic, then it's just like the best. But I actually don't have any garlic right now. It was one of the other things that I did not stock up on prior, one second, um, that I didn't stock up on prior to this food challenge that we're doing where we're not going to the grocery store for the entire month of October, so I was just out of luck. So I'll be using um, garlic powder instead, but definitely if you have fresh garlic on hand, use that instead. And I'm just gonna put a few shakes in there. In my world, the more garlic, the better. And then just salt and pepper to taste. So I'm just gonna check on the squash. The way that you tell that squash is done is by sticking a fork in it, and if it goes through very smoothly, then it's ready. If you kinda have to force it at all, then you wanna give it maybe another 15 minutes or so. Okay, so my squash are definitely done, maybe even just a little extra done. So I just let these squash cool down a little bit, and I'm gonna cut them in half, take out the guts, the guts, the seeds, <laughs> and then um, put all of the flesh um, straight into my pot over here. Okay, one of the things I'll mention is that if you want to use your seeds and roast your seeds and have, use them for a snack, then I think you're probably better off to take the seeds out first um, and roast those separately and then roast your squash and you can just roast them cut in half like this in the oven. Um, I just think that's probably a better way, but because in my case, just a minute, sweetheart, hold on. Um, because in my case, these are just gonna be going out to my chickens, I'm not worried about it. Okay, now I have all of my squash gutted. <laughs> so now I'm just going to add all of the squash over to the soup after I wash my fingers. Actually, I've changed my mind. I am going to actually bring the soup over here and add whew, the squash over here. I think that'll be easier. It already smells so good. Just the stock itself smells amazing. Okay, now I need to change the angle of the camera again. So 
<laughs> One of the things I can say about cook if I'm filming cooking videos is it's super tricky because you're constantly having to move the camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing because you're not in the kitchen here with me. Okay, changing camera angle again. One of the other squash that we use a lot around here is spaghetti squash. And I actually have a little bit of footage of when I made one of the, our favorite meals to use was spaghetti squash, which I'll put in here somewhere. But um, so basically all you do, and it's a super simple, is cook the squash, cut the squash in half, remove the insides, roast the squash until it's pretty much all the way cooked through and then add the sauce of your choice. So in the case of this recipe that I'm showing you here, I added a marinara, like a meat marinara sauce, and um, really thick, so lots of meat in it, and then roast it in the oven with some cheese on top, and that is a really fun way to eat spaghetti squash. Kids tend to love it, and, um, and it tastes really good. Parents love it too. <laughs> so that is another way that you can use um, squash that is super easy. I'm just gonna get the rest of this squash into here. I personally think the more squash the better, so it's nice and thick. And then I will come back and I will show you the next step. Okay, so I have the um, squash now all in the pot back there. And now the next step is just using an immersion blender and blending it until smooth or a blender blender and doing it in um, batches if that's what you need to do and just have them cook in with the soup. Thanks. Honey. So I'm going to waz this up, I think is how Jamie Oliver says it, and try it out and see how it is. So now that that's all mixed up, I'm going to let it cook down for probably about an hour or so just because I want it to be a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to add cubed potatoes to this just to bulk it up a little bit, but the flavor is so good. One of the th ingredients that I like to add towards the end of the cooking process is a can of coconut milk because coconut milk and curry is just such a good combination. But you can also add yogurt, you could add cream, you could even add a little bit of milk just to cream it up a little bit, but you can even eat it just like this. I just like the creaminess of the, of the coconut milk or the cream. I'm gonna be serving this for dinner tonight and Kate is going to be baking my 16 year old who's behind the camera, she's shaking her head. <laughs> she's going, she's not shaking her head about baking the buns that she's gonna to bake to go with this. She's shaking her head because I asked if she would do a video with me where she shows her bun recipe. She has a foolproof bun recipe that makes the best dinner rolls ever. And so we'll see if I can, maybe bribery will have to be involved, I don't know, but I'll see if I can get her in front of the camera. She's shaking her head, but I think I can do it. So you guys just all like leave a comment in the section, in the comment section below and be like, go Kate, you can do it. Cause she's an amazing cook. It's, a, it's amazing what she can do in a kitchen. And she actually really loves cooking. Unlike me who cooks more out of necessity, she actually is one of those people that would love to be a chef when she's older. So <laughs> she gets a lot of joy out of the kitchen. And I think it would be fun to share her joy for cooking with you guys. So you guys just like encourage her and we'll see if we can get her in front of the camera. I hope you enjoyed this video everyone and we're able to learn something about squash and how to prepare it. We have a really knowledgeable community of people that comment in the comment section here. So if you have any other questions about squash, definitely put them down there. And if I can't answer them myself, I'm sure someone else will be able to. Also, if anyone has any suggestions for your favorite recipe for squash, for instance, please do not hesitate to link that in the description box below or even copy it on there if you'd like, because I know I've just sort of scratched the surface of the things that you can do with squash. It's a super versatile vegetable super filling, really nutritious, and in my opinion, one of the funnest vegetables to grow. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you again in a couple of days. Bye.